Um, she's going to be speaking about OptiGate results. And from the DOD Academy, um, there were a lot of really interesting insights that she's um, come up with. Hey, Nicole. Yeah? We, we can't hear you in Boston. Oh. Oh. Thanks. Okay, sorry guys, sorry. Um, Rachel Moores, who was introduced to us by Dr. Peter Gorman, um, is going to present today on some really interesting insights for um, the OptiGate results. So a little bit of background on Rachel. Um, she was introduced to us by Dr. Gorman. Um, she is an undergrad at uh, University of Delaware in kinesiology and physiology. And she has gone on to get a degree as a doctor of chiropractic at the University of Bridgeport Chiropractic. Um, she's in her last year of school, and that's why she's here um, for one month interning with us. Um, and she's also working with Dr. Gorman to become a certified strength and conditioning specialist and microgate specialist. Um, she's going to be presenting some new correlations. Um, found through the DOD analysis, and I'll pass it over to her. Thank you, Nicole. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm sure it was not the food that drew you here. <laughs> so today I'm going to be talking a little bit um, about your next jump vitals. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the vitals that we get here. It's a combination of your blood pressure reading and also the march and place test as well as what we're going to introduce a little bit more today, the feedback that everyone is uh, so fond of getting here. So three-ish weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, we had the DOD here. And afterwards, we had um, what they did on Friday was they actually went through a workshop and then they gave each other feedback. So I have 20 individuals with, that are ranked number one through number 20. And what I wanted to find was whether their, mark, whether their uh, next jump vitals, their blood pressure test and their march and place test, told me anything about how they were ranked to see if I found any correlations between the two. So that's what I did. Uh, you can see here on the top left uh, the same picture. Just I basically just cross-referenced the blood pressure test, the balance test, and the feedback. And what you see in the bottom left here is their actual, the output that they got. So ranged from top to bottom, 1 through 20, after the workshop, they, they did this on each other. We had nothing to do with it. So what I found was, this is the same picture on the left, first looking at the blood pressure test, which tells me about your body's response to stress. It's color coded here. The pink indicates that the person has the worst uh, blood pressure test response. So they were the worst at dealing with stress is the, is the pink. The yellow are the people that were the best and the orange were in the middle. We'll get more into what the blood pressure test readings actually mean in a little bit. But just big picture, you can see in the pink, it's all pulled to the bottom. So for some reason and whether it's a complete coincidence, I don't think it is. Um, but everybody that, that had the worst response to stress did the worst in, their, in the workshop and then in their peer evaluation. Which seems intuitive, but when you actually look at the numbers, it's like smacks you in the face. So just uh, showing the difference between the top and the bottom, the people up top actually averaged their blood pressure increased 10 points, where the people in the bottom decreased by 9 points. So that's a pretty significant difference and you'll see that as we go along. The next thing I looked at was their March and Place vitals. Did that tell me anything about how they were ranked or were there any correlations there? And again what I found was when I averaged the imbalances of the top third, so whoever ranked 2.5 and above versus the bottom third, 2.0 and below, the same two categories that I looked at the blood pressure test, I found that the people that scored at the bottom were twice as imbalanced as the people that scored on the top. So pretty profound and again it kind of slapped me in the face when I when I saw that. So just so you know I didn't make this uh, not making this stuff up. Um, I took the next our next jump results, the all the vitals that I have from next jumpers, just to compare it to the DOG to make sure that it is 
a comparable um, a comparable thing that I can use the data that we got from the DOD and then hopefully help us next jumpers. So as you can see uh, here, the blood pressure and the performance imbalances are very comparable. Next jumpers are a little bit better than the DOD, but not significant. Possible implications from this, very simply, if you have a good blood pressure test or stress response and if you're uh, performing well physically, for some reason, in what we saw with the DOD, those people were ranked at the top. So again, it seems a little bit intuit intuitive, like, yeah, if I'm, if I'm physically fit and I uh, have a good response to stress, I'm going to do better. So now I want to show you guys how you actually can analyze your own vitals. So we give you this, this beautiful report that you see on the right. We do the leg work. We take your blood pressure laying down, standing up. We have you do the march in place test. And then this is what you get on the right. The three components we see are the blood pressure, or sh the blood pressure test, which measures, measures your body's response to stress, your overall performance, which are the graphs, the green, and then the one on the bottom, the orange and blue. And then third, what we do better than anybody, I think, is the feedback. Number one, I'm going to take you through this step by step. So um, for those being in New York, I'm sorry I didn't say this earlier. If anybody is interested, I might have uh, an old vital report for you in the back by Adrian if you're interested in following along. But that's a side note. First, we start off with blood pressure. and so the importance of this is when you're lying down, oops, sorry, when you're lying down, your, your heart doesn't have to pump against gravity. It's easy to get the blood to your brain and to every organ necessary. When you stand up, the blood immediately pulls to your feet, so your heart has to work harder. Your blood pressure needs to increase to keep the blood where it's supposed to go. So we want to see that, number one, your blood pressure increases, and then ideally it should increase 7 to 10. So, looking at your own results, what if your blood pressure drops or stays the same? That's telling me that for some reason your body is not responding to stress, to the stress of standing as it should. Some of the reasons that that, that could happen is somebody that's overstressed, um, so you're not getting enough sleep or good quality sleep, you're uh, eating fast food every day, bad nutrition or your adrenal glands aren't working properly and you have adrenal fatigue. In order to fix this, you can better manage your stress, uh, focus on your sleep quality and quantity, eat healthier, and we also have a really nice supplement here if it's the adrenal glands. Um, if you're interested, you can consider adrenal supplementation as well. Now the other, the other one, if, so what if your blood pressure increases more than 10 points? you're overreacting to change. So as soon as you stand up, your blood pressure spikes. This is uh, telling me that your sympathetic nervous system is overactive. So a little, a little science here. Your sympathetic nervous system is um, the system that, back in the day, back with cavemen, when you were gonna get attacked by a bear, your sympathetic nervous system kicks in and forces your body to fight. It's the fight response, it's the stress response. So if it's, if it's overactive or if it's like ready, uh, always on call, that's, the, that's when your blood pressure spikes like this. The moment you stand, your body screams an alarm and your blood pressure spikes. So what we need to do is quiet the system. The way we do that is decreasing our sleep, decreasing caffeine. You want to bring yourself down, not jack yourself up. And uh, again, nutritionally, it's very important also. You don't want to keep your body in that, in that stress state for too long. The next portion of the vitals is your march in place test. So the green bars, what you see here, uh, they actually represent total variability plus asymmetry in your step. So this is giving you kind of a big picture of how you're performing overall. Versus the bottom bar, the bottom, uh, the orange and the blue bars, this is really important to understand. It's a, diffi a difficult concept to understand, so I'm going to walk you through it kind of slowly. The orange bars are representing the variability each time you step within one leg. 
So every time you're doing, every time in the marketplace steps, you can't see my feet, but every time you step on the ground, how much is that leg changing in, in how long it's on the ground? Versus the blue bar, how symmetrical are you side to side? So every time your right foot goes down, is it the same contact time as when your left side goes down? Okay? So innately, our bodies want to be balanced. If this isn't the same, my right and my left, that's a limp, you know, the extreme side. That's when you develop a limp and that's when you get hurt. So you want the orange bar, you guys on the next You want the orange bar to be higher than, than the blue bar. So let's start, I'll start at the top, I don't want to get ahead of myself. First starting with just the green graph. This is simply telling you where your tendency is. So on the left, you want to be balanced. You want to be best at your natural. And then you want to be equally a little <coughs> bit off or the same, going fast and going slow. Looking at the top right, this is showing me that you're a lot better going slow than you are going fast. So it doesn't matter. You could be going to spin every single week, or you could be doing high-intensity workouts, but how are you doing them? How is your form? How is your function? Are you just muscling through it, or are you paying attention and getting the job done? So if you have a graph like the top right, you want to work on the, on the bad. You want to work on those high intensity, boxing, spin class. Focus on your form, focus on your function, and that will bring that bar down. Versus the bottom, the exact opposite. When you're forced to go slow, you're more imbalanced and, and you have more variability. So when you're doing the slow kind of activities, your endurance running, uh, your Pilates, your yoga, those type of things, again, form and function. By focusing on those and just being aware that that's an issue, you can, imp you can improve that, that bar. All right. Now the tricky one. Again, I'm going to repeat myself just so that we can really nail this in. The orange bars show variability within your step. The blue bars show imbalance overall. Two rules that you need to remember when you're looking at your vitals. Number one, the orange bar needs to be higher than the blue. You want to be symmetrical, and you want to be able to compensate to be symmetrical. Does that make sense? Okay. Rule number two, both bars, I want them to be below 5%. When, if you came to me in a clinic and, and you're above 5%, um, that's a, that starts to set off a yellow flag, like what's going on, why are these numbers getting so high? And then we can track them as you go. Three options for, for the bottom graph. The ideal example, again, orange bars above blue, less than 5% on, on each column. Top, right, you have the orange bars are too high. They're above 5%, but the blue bars are low. This is telling me that you're really balanced, but you're super variable each time. So you're shaky, whether it's at your ankle, your knee, your hip, or your core. So how do we fix that? You work on stability exercises, um, uh, core training, so things like uh, foam, using a foam pad, using a BOSU ball on your training, Pilates, great things that can bring this number down. Because the higher it gets, the more at risk you are for, say, falling, literally. Like, the, like uh, more elderly people tend to have graphs that, are, that have super high orange bars because they have so much variability and so much wobble. I've literally uh, tried to kill two birds with one stone. This is what my graph used to look like. And what I did was I started to um, lift while standing on foam pads. It might sound weird, but like I'm doing curls and I'm standing on a foam pad. These blue ones here. I'll show you. Just like this. You can work yourself up to using a BOSU ball. Okay. You can work yourself up to using a BOSU ball, which is where I am now. And now my orange bars are down to about three and four. So it really does work. And if you don't want to be the person that's just standing around on a foam pad like as your workout, make it more. Make it more. Moving down to this one. The, so the blue bars are higher than the orange. This is somebody that is physically oblivious. You're not, you're not realizing that you're in balance left to right. So in order to correct this, you need to work on more self-awareness and feedback. 
So um, the really nice thing about having the system, the OptiGate system here, is the live feedback tool that we have. And Anaya, you've used it, Lokia, Albert, a few of you have had the chance to use that. But please approach Peter, approach me if you if you have that kind of graph and you want to use that because it can actually give you live feedback as you're walking, as you're moving to become more symmetrical. Other ways to do this uh, without without thousands of dollars in technology is using uh, using a partner. So partner drills, um, uh, using mirrors and, and focusing on your form, all these things are gonna are gonna help the blue bar get get lower. The last component is the feedback. Everybody knows what this feedback app look, looks like on the side here, but it doesn't just have to be through the app. It's through your coaching sessions, it's through your TP. What you find out about yourself through that can lead you to what we call the humility course or the confidence course. Whether you lean more on the arrogant side or more on the insecure side. Ideally, you want to be balanced. So we have two portions of this, so the mind portion and the body portion. For the humility course up top, for the more person that, that leans more on the arrogant side, that's the person that um, practicing speaking last in meetings, getting on and off the elevator last, um, practicing actively patience and vulnerability, not just here at, at Next Jump, but also at home um, with your family. And lastly, is uh, asking for help. A lot of I, fall, I think I fall into this category, and I hate asking for help. So the more you can, the easier it gets. Trust me. The body side, the body portion of this is, in order to stimulate more humility and uh, kind of knocking yourself down a notch, mm -hmm. dance once a month. Or do any kind of exercise class that is makes you feel uncomfortable. Don't let yourself get good at it, because <laughs> it'll knock you down if you don't. So doing, doing the dance class once a month is really going to humble somebody who is super uncoordinated and has never done a dance class. Other uh, low intensity workouts like Pilates, yoga, endurance, things that stimulate patience are the, other, are the other kind of exercises I would recommend for this group. Versus uh, the insecure person, person that leans more on the insecure side, confidence course. So speaking first in meetings, um, practicing being courageous and more on the aggressive side, uh, doing things yourself, not always needing somebody to give you the okay in order to, to make a move. And then uh, it's more basic level, getting on and off the elevator first. So instead of letting everyone go before you, take a step. As for the body portion, we want to stimulate a little bit of confidence, so dancing once a week or doing that class you're uncomfortable with once a week to see improvement and see that you can get better at things. High intensity workouts like boxing, spin, circuit training, things that are going to really boost you, those are the other, those are the other um, workouts I would recommend for the more insecure person. And lastly, posture. We say we talk about posture all the time here, but holding yourself high, literally. Don't. You know, no moping around, doing this kind of thing, head down, hold yourself high. So once we have all this, we have awareness using the physical data, the blood pressure and the march in place test, plus the feedback that we get from our peers. Now how are we going to action on it? So this chart that you see on the right, sorry if it's a little bit haphazard, it was not, <laughs> it was done this morning. So. Um, Bear with me on that. But we're going to take a few examples and show you how you can apply this stuff. First, don't worry, I don't have your names on here. Um, but here's a vital output. Now, how do we how do we uh, how do we uh, take action on it? At the top, their blood pressure. The result is thriving. So you go to the thriving category. Not sure if I mentioned this before, but. We want you to constantly be elevating yourself, escalating. So we want to put a little bit of stress and then let your body uh, uh, learn how to deal with it. And then put a little bit more stress, learn how to deal with it, a little more stress. So if you're in the thriving category, we like to say, OK, plus one. So that means having one more project, one more meeting a week, and, or setting a new physical goal for yourself. So that's this person. That's why I have 
right over to thriving there. And then on the bottom here, this is also somebody who is perfect. So they're thriving and they have really good margin place tests. So again, we want you to kind of always be elevating. So setting a new physical goal for yourself is, is, is one way to do it. We want you to kind of be thrown off so that you can get better. Next person, so blood pressure surviving. You go to the surviving category. And then uh, this one here at natural and the fast paced is in the uh, oblivious category, in the category where they need more feedback in their workouts. And then of course, the, the third part of it is the feedback. What kind of feedback are you getting? And then that guides you towards the confidence or humility course. Again, uh, surviving, and then this person, really high, so orange bars are above five, blue bars are low. So this is the person that has a lot of variability. They need to work on stability and core exercises. Another one, so the overreacting blood pressure. Somebody that needs to quiet their nervous system, stop with caffeine, um, uh, better sleep quality, nutrition, all of those things. And then uh, coming down here, the 4.7 and the 4.5, if this is a baseline test, this is something you want to be uh, careful about, monitor for yourself. Because if those numbers get any higher, you're going to be in one of these categories that you need to do a fix. Right. So I just threw a lot at you, a lot. So if you have any questions, please shoot. <coughs> yes, Celia. So what happens when the graph looks like a brownie face instead of a smiley face? Oh, very good question. Okay, so the question is, what happens when <laughs> When the, the green graph, right? Okay, so let me go back. Huh? Kind of both. Both? So the green graph, he said, looks like a frowny face. I didn't give you, I didn't give you the example of that one, but um, so basically what you're saying, what you're seeing is that you're better when you're, to, with that metronome, you're better when you're told exactly what to do than when I just said, okay, march in place at whatever your own pace is. So, that translates into, again, very simply, form and function, just at your natural. It's, it's just saying that without, without the guidance of the metronome, that you couldn't really find yourself as well as when I told you exactly what to do. So don't get freaked out by the, by the, upside, <laughs> by the upside down face. Um, it's not, ideally, you wanna have, your natural should be your best, because you should be your best at your natural rhythm. So you really, Focus on, on self-awareness just in all your workouts and form and function. That should do the trick. We'll retest you in a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sister, I don't know if anybody, we have the sheets there. Anybody's interested in going through their results? Just a question. Yeah. Uh, do you think these results would uh, differ based on like even on a day-to-day -day basis, or uh, depending on the mental state you are in that particular day, day or? Um, I think it depends on stress level. I think it can throw off the numbers depending on how stressed, how sleep deprived you are, definitely. But overall, they're either gonna rise together, so orange will be above blue, and you'll either rise together and get worse because you're more stressed, or they'll decrease together versus flipping all the time, I don't think that is the case. The blood pressure would react with the stress. Yes, blood, that is a very good test for how, how well your body is responding to stress, is the, is the blood pressure test. And this is a question from, from Boston. How often do you recommend kind of like testing versus kind of the action and then retesting? Like once a quarter? Six weeks? If we're talking physically, it takes about four weeks for you to see any physical differences. So the march in place tests, it, that's, that's how long it usually takes to see the physical differences. So if your goal is to get those orange bars down and you're actively working on it, I'd say you can test once a month to see how you're, how you're doing, whether those bars are coming down or whether you're not doing something right. It's more about the awareness 
than anything. But once, it, once every few months, if you're actively working on these things, then you should, be, you should see differences. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Greg, did you have any questions about your your uh, personal results? Or are you good on that? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have it on the the, the chart there, so you can you feel free to use mine if people want an example. Oh, it's It, it was it was the one with the sky high blood pressure. Oh. <laughs> You're actioning on that, right, Greg? <laughs> yeah, my, my my wife wants me to go to the doctor this weekend. <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> to see their personal results or anybody that wants to get tested that that hasn't I know I, I, I did a bunch of you on uh, FitNet and I'm hoping to go to Boston to help them out with mm -hmm. with theirs in a week or so a week or two but feel free to reach out please I'd love to help Thanks, everybody. Um, appreciate everybody attending. Um, we also, in true Next Gen style, um, we are using the feedback app. So um, I think everybody knows how to find it. But just as a friendly helper um, for the presenters today and the First Friday team to please enter feedback. Um, and so we can share that with all the presenters and the team to make uh, each first Friday is better. So thank you for attending. Thank you.